Jr., who's not here for today. What you're going to get to see Rudy do takes years of practice and years of learning in order to do it properly. The idea is to wrap the hands in a manner that Terry can punch a guy as hard as he can punch and still not damage his hands. They do get damaged, and during Terry's career, at one point he had to lay off for five months because he broke his right hand hitting some guy on top of the head. You'd think that with these sides of boxing gloves and their hands already wrapped, you couldn't break your hands, but it happens. Like I said, it happens because of the power that he has in the punches. Normally it happens when they're in there fighting and the guy in front of his 20 and 0 records and 17 knockouts that 164 pounds and last less than two minutes. They get knocked out with headgear on and with Terry using 16 ounce gloves. So what you're going to get to see is the second young man. His name is Glenn Thomas. He fights typically at 160 to 64 to 68 pounds. He fought James Tony and went to a decision with James Tony for 12 rounds. He had a Scheduled. The reason he was in camp was for sparring and for a scheduled fight against Lamar Parks for the super middleweight title of the world, 168 pounds. Glenn tells me that uh, Lamar Parks is back out of the fight. He doesn't want to fight. Him. So this young man is also a world-class professional in his own right. <laughs> I just had two questions. The first one was what's the maximum weight you think he ends up? Uh, if you watched him fight the other night, he fought a week ago on USA. If you watched him fight, uh, he's the same thing. He started out fighting at 130 pounds, and now he's been in the alpha beta training too long, so he's up to 168 pounds. <laughs> Terry would fight Benny Pazienza. Uh, I don't know if Benny can get back down to 160. The idea of what you're seeing is, is that both fighters are working on technique and their eye-hand coordination, <laughs> being able to pick up the punch coming at you, roll under it, duck it, throw a punch behind it. That's the idea of the sparring sessions. You can't develop the eye-hand coordination without doing these sparring sessions.
just hollered at Terry Wood and sweat. I guarantee you that Brian over there was glad he didn't holler it while he was still in. <laughs> what you have here when we change up sparring partners is two things. One, it, it, the champ is sparring with a fresh, fresh sparring partner and needs to stay on his toes. Two, you get a different look. This fighter fights different than Brian did and, and any other sparring partner will too. So what you do is you give the champion two or three different looks every day for hey, Rigo, do you have anything to say for the sparring. camera before you go in with the champ? Want some? <laughs> Kill me. 
what you just got to see was a guy that was one of the better professionals here at San Diego, although Rigo has been out of training and not in shape. Five years a professional, and you can see what would happen to him, or what did happen in two rounds. What do you think would happen with the old boy with a beer over here? <laughs> against three different opponents, each one of them coming in fresh. And as it was pretty obvious for the last 30 seconds, you see how much gas he had.